All right, good morning, everyone. I'm Melissa Meyer, Communications Manager at the RTA. We're gonna let everybody continue to join, but if you wanna go ahead and start introducing yourself in the chat, you can use your, your rename yourself using your pronouns if you'd like, and um, go ahead and share your name and your organization in the chat, and we'll get started here in just a minute. All right, I'm going to get started and people can continue to filter in and introduce themselves in the chat as we get underway. But I um, wanted to say hello again. I'm Melissa Meyer, communications manager at the RTA. I use she, her pronouns. Um, welcome. We are so excited to have you here at the fourth Trans is the Answer Coalition meeting. Please stay muted. Um, we will have the chat going throughout the meeting for you to continue to talk and participate. Um, and there will be other opportunities as well. Jessica Cabe is going to be in the staff or uh, in the chat um, on behalf of the RTA, helping answer any questions that you may have um, if you need technical support or have a question about something in there. This will likely be a big group. Um, we're so thrilled to see so many passionate transit supporters, um, but that size of the meeting sometimes means we have limited opportunities for open mic conversation. So the best way that we'll be able to do that is through some breakouts later in the meeting. Um, after our hour long meeting, we also leave this Zoom meeting open for an extra half hour from 1030 to 11 for networking, question answer on any topic, announcements, anything like that. Um, as I've said, Jessica Cabe is our helper in the chat today. We will also be hearing from Michael Vandecree, Kyle Whitehead, Kendra Johnson, and Hirsch Singh as presenters. And later in this meeting, our breakout groups will be led by these staff members who will introduce themselves there. So please stay on mute, uh, update your name if you'd like, and um, go ahead and click the closed caption button if you'd like to see a written transcript. All right, next slide. So as I said, thank you for being here. This is our fourth meeting of the Trans is the Answer Coalition. Some of you may have been engaged with the RTA in this effort from when we first started developing the strategic plan uh, several years ago. And for some of you, this may be the first time joining us. Either way, um, we're so glad that you're here. If you're not familiar, the RTA is the Regional Transportation Authority. We don't operate trains or buses, but we oversee financing and planning for the CTA, Metra, and PACE. The RTA is required to create a strategic plan for our transit system every five years, but we've never taken as collaborative an approach as we did when developing our most recent plan, Transit is the Answer, and continued that collaboration after the plan was adopted with this coalition. So this is new for us too. And why are we here? Uh, you know, I think we know that transit has been challenged like never before in the past few years, and we're still facing difficult times ahead. An operating funding gap is looming when COVID relief dollars run out, and an ongoing operator shortage has led to frequency and reliability issues, and there are concerns about safety and equity, and these are all things that we think about regularly. But we also know that this is a time of great opportunity. We truly believe transit is the answer to some of the biggest challenges facing the Chicago region, and to achieve its full potential will take work and investment. What we at the RTA have learned over the last few years is that we're not alone and we can't solve these issues alone. So many people are passionate about not just preserving Chicago's transit system, but making it better. And we have a better chance of being successful when we all work together. If you haven't read everything in Transit is the Answer, our, our plan adopted in 2023, that's okay. There's more uh, information about it online. But what we really wanna do with this meeting is dive into the work of implementation. So next slide. This is just a quick agenda of what we're going to go over today. Um, our goal in this meeting is to give you some updates on the major implementation steps that we've taken in the year since Transit is the Answer was adopted. That includes the Access Pilot Program, which was launched in January to provide reduced fare metro rides to riders experiencing low incomes. You'll hear an update on the Public Transit Safety and Security Summit, which was held in February and brought together leaders from the city, suburbs, police departments, nonprofits, and more to discuss the important goal of making transit safer for all riders and operators. We'll provide an update on the agency's legislative agenda, 
and advocacy work at a state and federal level, which will be crucial in closing the fiscal gap that transit agencies are facing. And we'll explain an exciting project to develop an access to opportunities platform, which will help us understand who in the Chicago region has access to what level of transit and who doesn't. All of this is important data that can help shape future decision making. Following those short presentations, we'll split into breakout groups where you can ask questions or speak about the topics that we just discussed. There will be an opportunity for you to join two different breakout groups so you can ask questions or hear more about more than one topic. And after the breakout groups, we'll come back here as a big group and have time for more networking as a big group, questions, and discuss the next steps for the coalition in 2024. Um, are there any questions about the, the structure of the meeting? Okay, if not, I'm going to turn it over to Michael Vandercreek to talk about our first topic. Great. Thank you so much, Melissa. If I could have the next slide. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Michael Vandekreek. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm the director of the Mobility Services Department at the RTA. This department is responsible for the management of the RTA fare programs and the ADA paratransit certification process. We also provide educational presentations on transit options throughout the region. Today, I'm here to talk about progress that has been made on one of the action items in Transit is the Answer, which is making paying for transit more seamless and more affordable. During the development of the plan, the Strategic Plan Working Group members advocated for expanding access to free or discounted fares to members of households experiencing lower incomes. I'm happy to report that the Access Pilot Program launched on February 1st to begin to address this very important action item. First, I'll provide some information on the Access Pilot Program, and then I'll tell you about additional program enhancements that have been made this year to improve rider access to transportation programs and services. So let me begin with the Access Pilot Program. This pilot was developed to understand the impact of expanding reduced fare on transit to individuals that are experiencing lower incomes. The pilot is made possible through a partnership of RTA, Cook County, and Metra, and offers a reduced fare on all of the Metro lines in the system. At this time, access is only being piloted on Metro. To qualify, an applicant must live within the six county region and be enrolled in the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, better known as SNAP. Applicants can apply online by visiting getaccess.org, by mail using a paper application, or in person by visiting one of RTA's fare program assistance centers. As a part of the application process, applicants will be asked to provide a copy of their SNAP eligibility determination letter and a copy of an Illinois ID proving they live within the six county region. The RTA began accepting applications on January 16th and Metro began accepting access permits on the system on February 1st. The pilot will run for 18 months and will end on July 31st, 2025. To date, over 2,000 individuals have been found eligible for access. Next slide, please. In addition to managing the Access Pilot Program, the RTA is focused on finding ways to serve additional communities to improve transit access and to make transit more affordable and equitable for individuals who need these vital services. To that end, we have been working hard to develop new programs and revise processes for current programs. One new program that was developed in coordination with the network advocating against domestic violence is called the Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault RTA Public Transportation Assistance Program. In this program, the RTA provided 25,000 full fare venture permits, each preloaded with $20 to the network to distribute to survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault. To date, the network has distributed 4,000 venture cards to over 1,200 survivors. The RTA also made changes to the Ride Free program to improve the ease of access. Effective January 1st, the eligibility period for a Ride Free permit was changed from a two-year term to five years. In addition, in the past, to be found eligible for the Ride Free permit, applicants were required to complete a Benefit Access Program, or BAP, application through the Department on Aging every two years to continue their eligibility. That rule has been changed and now ride-free applicants only need to apply for BAP the first time they are seeking ride-free eligibility and then upon renewal they only need to prove their Illinois residency. 
I also want to talk briefly about changes to the ADA paratransit certification process, again, to ease program access. In the past, people interested in applying for ADA paratransit were required to participate in an in-person interview and assessment appointment every four years. Now, customers only need to participate in an in-person assessment the first time they are seeking ADA paratransit eligibility. When it's time to renew their eligibility after their initial four-year term, they only need to participate in a 30-minute phone interview to verify that there have not been any significant changes to the individual's health condition or functional ability to use transit. And if not, then they can continue to use um, ADA paratransit and they'll continue to be eligible. This change has been very well received by customers and again, makes it easier for ADA paratransit customers to access this vital service. Lastly, beginning January 1st, we decided to stop charging customers a $5 fee to replace lost fare permits. We made this change because we know it is hard for most individuals enrolled in these programs to afford a $5 fee while living on a fixed income. It was just a very small action we could take to remove a barrier for people with disabilities and seniors in accessing affordable transit. So as you can see, we have made some good progress on this action item, and we'll continue to explore options to expand upon this work. Thank you. I'll now turn it over to Kyle Whitehead. Thank you, Michael. We can go to the next slide. And one more. Good morning. I am Kyle Whitehead with the Government Affairs team here to provide an update on the Safety and Security Summit. On February 27th, the RTA joined with CTA, Metro, PACE, the City of Chicago, the State of Illinois, and many other partners to host a cross-sector public transit safety and security summit. This event was the culmination of more than a year of work dating back to the development of our strategic plan, which many of you contributed to during working group meetings. The coalition also provided valuable feedback last summer that helped shape the design and content of the event, and several of you were able to attend. The event gathered nearly 80 regional leaders and transit riders to explore holistic solutions to the safety issues the transit system is facing. Areas of focus included enhancing personal security and addressing perception of crime on transit, incorporating transit-specific strategies into social service initiatives, and creating safer, more welcoming environments in transit stations and stops. Opening remarks were delivered by RTA Executive Director Leanne Redden, City of Chicago Deputy Mayor of Community Safety Gary and Gatewood, and State Senator Ron Villavallam, the Chairman of the Senate Transportation Committee. These remarks were followed by an hour-long panel discussion with leadership from LA Metro and Metro Transit in Minneapolis, St. Paul, exploring how they are navigating challenges similar to what we are experiencing here in Chicago. After an overview presentation from RTA staff featuring rider survey data, the event concluded with small group breakout discussion where city and agency officials, riders, advocates, and state leaders shared personal experiences, provided feedback on existing initiatives, and identified areas where additional attention and investment is needed. Just before the summit, RTA, RTA announced a new safety and security category within our community planning program. Organizations can apply for grants to support temporary station activation projects at rail stations and bus stops that help make the areas safer and more welcoming for riders and residents. We were thrilled to receive several really exciting applications that are now under review. Thank you to many of you and your organizations who are uh, expressing interest in that program. Really good to see. We look forward to uh, funding announcements and, and more news later this year. Yes. In terms of the overall summit, staff is working on a summary report right now that we look forward sharing, to sharing with the coalition and officials from across the region who can work with us and other partners to implement these strategies in, in 2024 and, and beyond. RTA and really everybody who was part of the summit wants to make sure that uh, this is not just a discussion, but leads to near-term implementation on many of the ideas that, uh, that were discussed. So uh, we will have more to report there soon. For now, uh, I'm excited to share a brief video that captures much of the energy and progress made at the event um, before I pass it over to my colleague Kendra for a legislative update. So we can go to the, the next slide and, and play the video.
You're going to hear from some panelists today who have joined us from Los Angeles and Minneapolis to highlight the fact that this is a national issue. Crime on transit is not just a Chicago issue, it is a transit issue across the entire nation. RTA, CTA, Metro Pace, and suburban municipalities, the City of Chicago is committed to working holistically to improve safety across the region's public transit systems. The holistic approach to safety is the only way we move in a different direction. Uh, we have a once in a generation opportunity to uh, plan our public transit system uh, that is so incredibly vital uh, to our region uh, for the year 2050 and beyond. Educate riders on our code of conduct uh, and also are trained to provide customer information, connections to services. That's a long way of saying really where our focus has been is building up additional layers uh, to supplement the work of our police department. I'm really excited to be able to dig into this a little bit deeper, um, not only share out what we have learned and done in Los Angeles, but to learn from all of you, especially in our breakout sessions, to be able to roll up our sleeves um, and take this on. Look forward to hearing any additional feedback and questions in the breakout groups. Uh, for now, we will pass it over to Kendra. Good morning. Uh, my name is Kendra Johnson. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm on the RTA's government affairs team. Today, I will provide some updates on our current legislative priorities and how we see them taking shape in the next couple of years. Um, in previous meetings, we've outlined the timing and scope of the fiscal cliff, and then used your feedback to develop a legislative agenda that highlights how the RTA will pursue policies that address some of the system's current and future challenges. Today, we'll dive into the details of how we are socializing the agenda and a bit on timing. Uh, so first, I'm happy to report that there are many reasons for optimism in the system's recovery lately. Ridership continues to grow as CTA, Metra, and PACE are providing more than 1.2 million trips per weekday and adjust their service to new travel patterns and meet the evolving mobility needs of riders. Weekend and off-peak trips have surpassed pre-pandemic numbers and midday and off-peak trips continue to increase. There are new fare passes and products to incentivize more regional mobility, and as Michael went over, we're expanding the region's reduced fare offerings with an income-based access pilot on Metra that is already garnering a high level of participation. Um, specifically in 2023, we added 45 million additional rides and crossed the 300 million mark for the first time since the pandemic. There were more than 170 days with ridership over 1 million trips, and that's triple that of 2022. Uh, the 2024 regional budget projects uh, continued growth this year. That being said, uh, due to decades of underfunding and changes in travel patterns, we don't expect the system to recover to pre-pandemic levels in the near term. And the region's transit system is facing at least a $730 million operations gap by 2026, which represents about 20% of the annual operations budget. We also anticipate that this number will grow annually as we're already seeing inflationary pressures having a strong effect on the cost of providing service meaning that the system will likely need closer to $1.5 billion in new revenue to deliver the level and quality of service that riders expect and deserve. The good news is we have some time for outreach and education as we approach the fiscal cliff. Uh, so in terms of a timeline for legislative action, we're taking advantage of this session and the fall 2024 veto session to continue engaging state lawmakers and ensuring they have the information they need for potential legislation to be introduced during the spring, spring 2025 session. Uh, so this is where our legislative agenda comes in. And as you can see, the first two items on the agenda focus squarely on securing additional funding and the structural reforms required to make the system less reliant on rider fares. And then the second two items focus on improving coordination and operations in ways that enhance the rider experience and leveraging the transit system to achieve state and regional climate goals. This includes how the RTA system is making progress on the service board's ambitious goals to combat climate change, 
Uh, transit is one of the greatest tools our region has to meet its emission reduction goals in both getting people out of their cars and in transitioning transit fleets themselves to be zero emissions. Um, at the end of my time, I'll share a bit about an exciting example of that work. We can go to the next slide. The majority of our recent advocacy has focused on how state funding for RTA's free and reduced fare and ADA paratransit programs impacts funding for the system overall and the future budget deficit. As you can see on this chart, these programs are drastically underfunded and have been for decades. State funding for ADA paratransit and the reduced fare and ride free programs represents 4% and less than 20% of the overall cost of the programs respectively. So this means that local agency agencies are left to cover the bulk of the costs ourselves out of general operating revenue. And this is funding that could otherwise be used to support frequent and reliable fixed route service. So the lack of funding does have trickle down effects on service quality across the system. RTA and the service boards are rolling out innovative strategies to allow these programs and services to meet the region's mobility needs while improving their long-term sustainability. But it's their severe underfunding that presents the most immediate challenge um, and we're looking to address it in continued conversations with lawmakers regarding the fiscal cliff. Within these conversations, programs like the Access Pilot help demonstrate ways that transit can better serve the region's vulnerable residents, and resources like the Access to Opportunities tool, which Hirsch will go over shortly, can help us communicate the value of transit. But by doing the work now, we can ensure that state legislators are armed with the necessary tools to shape policies that will put the system on strong financial footing and allow the operators to implement the kinds of improvements that riders want to see. This group, along with other transit riders and advocates across the region, will continue to have a large role in the success of our efforts. Lawmakers need to hear how transit is essential to you, your families, and the overall health of the vital and vitality of the region. So there's no doubt we'll keep you updated as this process continues and hopefully be able to call on you when the time comes to voice your support for transit. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Um, just pivoting a bit to the climate planning work that I teased earlier, recently RTA coordinated a regional application to further advance a zero emissions transit network. This program is the US EPA's Climate Pollution Reduction Grant Program, or CPRG. The funding opportunity is part of a series of climate action planning being led locally by the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning, or CMAP, and the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus. The funding opportunity is not just for transportation, it also includes green industry, carbon reduction efforts for residential and commercial buildings, and things like wastewater plant decarbonization. Um, but the Transforming Transit application is for $375 million in total, with about a third of it going to each of the service boards. The majority of funds are for vehicle replacement, which includes 83 40-foot buses, 50 60 foot articulated buses and 32 battery electric trailer cars that can be used with the um, battery electric locomotives that Metra is already in the process of procuring. So we've collected several letters of support for the application. Thank you to those who have signed on so far. If you are part of an organization who would like to sign a letter of support, please reach out to me. Um, I will put my contact information in the chat and I can help uh, get you the info you need We'll continue to update coalition members if and when funds are awarded, but we anticipate further programs to continue advancing clean transportation through greenhouse gas reduction efforts and other opportunities. Um, thanks for your time today, and I'm looking forward to hearing more from you in our breakout groups. I will pass it off to Hirsch. Next slide, please. Thanks, Kendra. My name is Hirsch Singh. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm a principal analyst at the RTA. I'm here today to discuss the RTA's new Access to Opportunities platform. The Access to Opportunities platform is software that will help advance our vision of safe, reliable, accessible public transportation that connects people to opportunity, advances equity, and combats climate change. As Kendra stated, this platform will also help us advance the legislative agenda. In this discussion, when we talk about opportunities, we're referring to jobs, education, healthcare, and other essential services. As you know, equity is a core guiding principle of transit as the answer and is central to its implementation. This software platform will aid in fulfilling a promise of a more equitable transit system and transit investment, 
specifically for populations with historically poor access. For example, Black and Latinx residents combined can access over 17% fewer jobs via transit than the average resident. And as shown here on this slide, Black and Latinx residents also have longer commute times when compared to all workers in the region. So beyond the moral imperative, improving access to opportunities for all residents is also an economically smart decision for the region. Next slide, please. The Access to Opportunities platform will aid in the implementing phase of Transit is the Answer by providing analytical tools for assessing key metrics and investment that are outlined in the plan. Back in 2016, the RTA began creation of its own Access to Opportunities Index, and this new platform will help further advance those efforts with more comprehensive and up-to-date tools. The new platform will also include various components allowing for detailed analysis of current access levels throughout the region by providing rich demographic data, up-to-date transit schedule information, multimodal networks with travel times and cost burdens. The platform utilizes a variety of data sets and complex algorithms to assess the number of opportunities accessible via transit or by any other mode from anywhere in the region. It is also important to note that this platform will be used in collaboration with our partners. The service boards, CTA, MetroPace, as well as CMAP will also have access, allowing for a consistent analysis platform and more collaboration. Next slide, please. Now for an example. In this example, we will show the impacts of frequency or levels of service on access. For this scenario, we're only utilizing pace routes. The bus routes on the map are shown or symbolized by frequency. So the thicker lines represent routes that have more frequent service and the thinner routes have less frequent service. For example, the routes shown in thick red lines have high frequencies of 15 minutes or less. Let's compare two locations to see how people can access them via transit. In the example shown on this slide, Let's, anal let's analyze the location on Gulf Road near just north of Evanston, which is served by Pace Route 208, a route with a moderate level of service of about every 30 minutes. The colors on this map represent the travel time required to reach the specified location on Gulf Road. Green shows areas that take anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes up to the purple areas, which show areas that take 60 minutes. As you can see circled in red, the number of people that can access this location via transit is approximately 195,000 within 60 minutes. Next slide. Next, let's analyze the location just to the south on Dempster Street. This location is served by Pace's Pulse Dempster Line, a route with a high level of service of approximately every 15 minutes. And it's also served by a fixed route service on, with Pace Route 250 Gulf Road, which offers an, a moderate level of service. The same is true on this map. The areas shown in green represent origins of 15 to 30 minutes up to the purple showing 60 minutes. As you can see, the number of people that can access this location via transit is approximately 355,000 within 60 minutes. That's over 150,000 more than the previous location, just based on improved levels of frequency. This is just a simple example to highlight the capabilities that are possible utilizing this platform. Next slide. Not only is access crucial for the mobility of our residents, it's also a key metric in highlighting the importance of transit funding and in advocacy of transit for our residents. In the coming months, the RTA plans to utilize this platform to assess access across the region to inform policy and strategic decisions, assess equity across the region, create tools for project analysis and performance management, and aid in the technical analysis for transit as the answer implementation efforts. In the breakout groups, we will uh, dive further into this topic and seek your input. And with that, I'll send it back over to Melissa. Next slide. 
Great. Um, thank you so much to all of our staff for presenting um, some quick updates on all the important work going on. Um, now we're going to give everybody an opportunity to discuss, ask their questions, learn more uh, by going into some breakout groups. Uh, there will be a breakout group for each of the four topics that you just heard about, the Access Pilot, Safety and Security Summit, our legislative agenda, and uh, the Climate Grant, and the Access to Opportunities platform. So we'll open those up in just a minute. You should see something pop up on your screen that lets you pick which one you want to join from the list of four. Um, and we'll keep those breakouts open for 10 minutes. And then we'll bring everyone back here. And then we'll open them up again so you can go to another group. Um on another topic if you'd like, or if you wanna stay in the same one and keep talking about that topic, that's okay too. Um, or go back to that one for a second time. So this will give you an opportunity to hear more from RTA staff, ask any questions you have, provide any kind of feedback, share input, um, and just kind of have a more in-depth conversation about these topics since we gave a, a pretty quick overview. So if we wanna go ahead and open the breakout rooms, and someone will, from RTA staff will stay in this main room um, if people get lost or are having issues with, uh, with the Zoom or anything like that. Are we able to, there we go. So now you should see a little pop-up that says join a breakout room. You should be able to choose which room you would like to go to. I see a lot of people doing that. If you're having trouble, feel free to speak up and we can assign you to a room. Okay, I think everyone has rejoined us from uh, the breakout rooms. So thank you for that. I hope everyone had a great discussion in those rooms and was able to learn something from the presentations and the smaller group discussions. Um, a few, uh, if you want to the next slide, Tina. A few next steps. Um, if you care about transit and it's clear that many of you all of us really do, um, please stay engaged. Sign up to read our newsletter, follow us on social media. We'll have another coalition meeting this summer. Um, so look for information and come back. Um, we'll have, I'm sure, new topics we'll be talking about by then and updates on the things that we've talked about today. If you have something specific in the meantime that you want to talk about, you can always reach out to communications at rtachicago.org and we'll direct your message to the right staff person. So now uh, is the part of the meeting where we kind of leave things open. Um, RTA staff will stay on the call for the next 30 minutes and we will be happy to answer any questions from the group, kind of keep conversation going, can use this time as networking. If you have something else, you know, that your organization is doing that you want to surface for a larger group, we have representation from a lot of different organizations here today. Um, but yeah, just, we'll leave the meeting open at this point to, to hear more from you or if you would like to stay on, but that kind of ends the formal presentation from us. How were the breakouts? I was out here in the main room directing people. I hope everyone was able to get some more information in the breakouts. I thought the breakout room was awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, good. Uh, hi, I'm Tina Fassett-Smith. I'm the Director of Communications here at the RTA. Does anybody have any announcements from their organization? Anything you want to share? Events um, related to transit, hopefully, but um, could be broader than that. Um, this is really just a, a, set, a open mic session where you can share information. Or um, So if anyone does, just raise your hand and we'll call on you or put your information in the chat. Um, yes, to Matthew's question in the chat, we um, will share 
recording of the meeting um, afterwards, um, likely in our next uh, newsletter. Um, Sarah, go ahead. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Sarah Fiorito with the city of Evanston. Um, I just started in my role recently, and I just want to say that we're really excited to work with partners in the region. My role has been empty for the last two years on just improving transit connectivity and also active transportation connectivity um, throughout the entire region and just a lot of different stuff related to funding that, doing a lot of inter-municipality, inter-agency connection work since there's so many different jurisdictional challenges along so many different roads that cut through different communities. So uh, would love to be in touch with anybody who wants to collaborate on any of that stuff at the local, state, uh, regional level, um, please do reach out. Thank you. If you're comfortable putting your, your email in the chat, Sarah, go ahead. Um, great to hear. Uh, Matt, I saw you have a hand up. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, I've got two. Um, firstly, I'm on the steering committee for the annual Transport Chicago conference, which happens on June 14th. And we have our call, call for proposals out. Um, it was recently extended to be until this Sunday night. Um, all we're really looking for um, by then is a short one pager abstract about um, what topic you'd like to discuss. Um, there's sessions, posters, uh, many different ways to engage with the conference. Um, and we're really trying to be as holistic as possible um, and just build that up um, more and more as the, the conference kind of um, develops over time. Um, so you know, we're really looking at um, bringing in as many different perspectives because, you know, transportation and mobility really do um, affect so many different parts of this, as we all know. Um, so if anyone has questions, I'll put my uh, email down into the chat. Um, I'm on the communications team for uh, for the conference. Um, and then another thing I wanted to plug, um, if anyone is interested, um, that's just kind of a fun um, opportunity. Um, YPT Chicago does transport trivia every year. It's always a very popular event, and it's happening on April 16th um, next Tuesday um, at 530 in South Loop. Um, so again, I can get you in touch with anyone who's interested in that as well. Oh, and I see uh, Kyle also uh, has been linking stuff. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks, Matt. Those both sound like a lot of fun. Um, there's a question in the chat about how is the RTA collaborating with uh, CMAP and their part report? Um, in regards of what information is presented to legislators. Um, does anybody from RTA staff want to jump in on that one? Anthony, you want, you want to take that? Or Kendra. Or Kendra. Yeah, so RTA worked with um, CMAP pretty closely during the part process. Um, now that the part report has been delivered to lawmakers, um, I think we're we're highlighting the important recommendations that that were in part that included the fact that transit has been underfunded for decades. Um, that is also echoed in transit is the answer. Um, I think both reports or both plans call for a lot of the same things. Um, and the main the main driver of all of these conversations is to fund transit sustainably. Um, so that the system can, you know, reach its full potential. And a lot of those uh, outcomes are are outlined in the part report. So um, sort of a two-pronged approach here. Transit is the answer provides a lot of uh, what we're talking about. Part report has a lot of parallels. So those are both in lawmakers' hands now. And, and we're having all those conversations as we move forward towards the fiscal cliff. Thanks, Kendra. Um, any, I think, else from the group? Matt, can you share the information about transit trivia in the chat if you're still here? People might like that. Yeah, absolutely. Trivia. I'm getting my links together. Yes. Well, a few of us, uh, at, oh, Matthew has his hand raised, sorry. Hi, thanks. Uh, I am involved with an employee resource group at uh, at uh, my uh, 
employer. And um, I'm interested to know how organizations are getting involved with those sign on letters uh, to uh, the, you know, for, for the different programs and how we can kind of advocate for our, our organizations to get involved uh, with those kind of uh, programs. Like, is there perhaps a coalition of employers on behalf of employees or uh, some examples of those support letters that uh, we could reference? Can you be mercy if I'm about sign on letters or? Yeah, I can take a stab at that. Yeah. Kyle, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think that we've um, reached out directly to any business groups um, or things like that, but we would be definitely be open to uh, to working with you if you're part of a a group of of businesses or some other type of organization. Just just shoot me an email. I'll put my email in the chat, and we can provide a sample and and all that good stuff. Yeah. So Kendra is talking specifically about the um, climate pollution reduction grant opportunity. So that we were, we were talking about that application right. for bus electrification and train electrification, where we're actively seeking letters of support. Um, the deadline is a, a, about a week from today. I know we have some partners on the call right now who already have received a request from us, but if you're part of an organization that wants to support that application specifically, please reach out. It sounds like the question might've been a little bit more broad, like how do I express support for transit in general? Um, or specific economic related initiatives from the business community. Um, I think that we're always happy to have those conversations. Our team, Kendra and myself specifically, uh, you know, part of our responsibility is to have those uh, third party external partnerships and try to work with you um, so that support for transit is coming from outside the system. So, um, you know, on in in terms of specific legislative initiatives, as we get closer to action on the fiscal cliff and things like that, we will have very uh, public requests to support um, a funding request or support a piece of legislation, and and that's where we want business support, environmental support, and the whole um, broad spectrum of of people who benefit uh, from transit. So, um, yeah, but if you have anything. Uh, particular opportunities in mind, please um, flag them for us. And, and we're always happy to just uh, to chat more offline about that. Great. Um, another question in the chat from Pete, um, asking if the RTA aligns with part views on governance reform. Um, just for background, the part report provides several options on um, many different parts of transit's future, including funding, and uh, governance. I'll send that back over to Kendra and Anthony. Um, yeah, so the, the part report outlined a number of different options for governance changes um, to the transit system. RTA is generally open to opportunities that allow us to take on certain tasks that let the service boards um, do what they do best, which is deliver transit service. Um, at the end of the day, though, any governance changes, uh, they don't address the fiscal cliff, which is what we're primarily focused on. Um, and it's not necessarily up to us. Um, so I think the short answer is yes, we're aligned with with certain recommendations in there. I don't know if it's across the board, but um, you know, we're happy to discuss further. I see there's another plug in the chat for another fun event. Looks like there's a lot of uh fun happening near transit with rails trails and ales on the metro heritage line coming up in may um so a lot of fun ways to enjoy the nicer weather and our transit system people can be putting on their calendar thanks for everybody sharing those Well, a few of us at uh, RTA staff are committed to staying here for the full um, time because we want to make sure if anybody comes late that we're here to let them know what happened. But if you want to drop off, 
you know, you're more than welcome or RTA staff also. Um, we are so grateful uh, to all our presenters and to all of you for coming. Um, and please, please stay in touch. Uh, question in the chat about the sign program. Um, are there plans to expand the RTA sign program beyond the stations that it's been rolled out to? We'd love to see signs rolled out at all possible transit connection opportunities. So for people who don't know, the RTA has a uh, interagency sign program um, that has used a lot of grant funding to put wayfinding and directional signs at a lot of transit stations and stops where multiple service boards intersect. So if you have a metro station and the pace stop is actually around the corner. We've put signs in to make sure everybody knows where to go. Um, so there are still signs um, being put out there this year. I know our sign program is ongoing, but I don't know if there's anybody in this meeting who can speak specifically to the future of that program. I know some people on staff who could, but they may not be in this meeting. But if not, we can uh, get an answer to you soon, Pete. But um, I do know that's a great program we're really proud of, but more than a thousand signs out around the region, um, helping people find their way on the transit system. It's yeah, another thing that um, takes funding, you know, to do, so. Yeah, the Kevin was on the call, but I think he, he just dropped off. But my understanding is there are plans to expand out to other uh, areas in the region. The idea was to address the areas where there are the kind of more intermodal connections first and address those and then as the program gets more funding we can roll out to to more locations so yeah we definitely started with a lot of the major hubs first like aurora and Joliet, and places where you know multiple things intersect and it's been a really successful program so far um arnold i saw you had a hand up uh yes a quick question um i'm reading a lot about the south shoreline they now have two tracks I'm reading about uh, Chicagoans traveling to uh, uh, the uh, Dunes area and, uh, you know, a lot of traffic, regional traffic going back and forth between Chicago and Indiana. Also, a number of uh, employees that work on the far southeast side, they come from Indiana. I'm wondering if uh, Metro, I'm sorry, if RTA is doing anything to address that issue as far as uh, interconnections between the various modes of transit, Metra, South Shoreline, CTA, uh, and PACE. Does anybody on RTA staff wanna jump in on that one? I, I can uh, provide a little bit of color. Um, I can say that we have met with uh, NERPT and, and meet with them regularly. NERPT is the, Northern Indiana Regional Planning Commission, kind of the equivalent of CMAP. Um, and then NICD uh, is the operator. Um, we participated in development of their most recent uh, mobility and transportation plan. Um, you know, there there are certainly opportunities where, um, you know, a more integrated offering could help, um, but there are challenges in, in how the service is funded. Um, and, you know, we, uh, we fund our service by charging a sales tax that is tied to the six county geography, um, and we're limited in what we can operate outside of the six counties without, you know, coming to an agreement on how to fund it. And and thus far, there hasn't been um, anything proposed on their part to make those connections. Um, so I think that there's there's potential there. There's work to be done. I think you bring up a great point about, you know, people may access a job across state lines, and that um, the realities of the transit network can be really challenging in that that scenario. Um, so I think it's something to continue to work towards, but I don't know that um, uh, our expectation is that that will change too much um, without uh, more funding um, to, to, to provide the service. Thanks, Peter. 